Hello, check out our latest Pink Table conversation with caregivers who will talk about their challenges in the caretaker roles and share their unique self-care tips. Whether you're a current or a past caregiver, you'll pick up some tidbits of actionable advice about how to stay healthy for yourself and those you care for. And we're back. Hi, I'm Crystal Pruitt, a member of Zeta Upsilon Omega Chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. Today, we're going to be discussing ways to stay healthy and tips for caring for others. Before we begin, I would like to introduce some amazing individuals who are or have been caregivers. We have Arlie Steele, Erica Shepard, Latanya Alexander, Lynette Buchanan, Mary Murph, Sandra Gibson, and Dr. Marilyn Fudge. So let's get right to it. Um, what are some challenges each of you face as caregivers? Erica, can you start with that first question? Some of the challenges I face as a caregiver are just day to day, the mental health of myself and my husband. It's very difficult. Um, with him having had a transplant each week it's something new and to keep our keep ourselves uplifted mentally because we you know we know that it'll be okay but honestly sometimes it's very difficult to just be for sure um i began a writing campaign to obtain information so i could educate myself because that was certainly a challenge dealing with the illness that very few people knew anything about when I was taking care of my mom was to be able to schedule everything that needed to be done. I had a young child and my mother came to live with us. So organizing my time to be able to work, take care of her, take care of my daughter, daughters, because one was young and one was a teen, and then to be uh, available and attentive to my husband. That was for me uh, a very challenging thing self-care mixed in and are woven with the ability to balance the care and the needs of everyone else that you're servicing. What groceries do I buy? Because for example, I've gone vegan and my mom and my dad and my aunt aren't kind of here going vegan. So the major challenge is how do you take care of three people with my aunt being in a whole nother location? Both of her children have passed away. So trying to make sure I meet all of her needs and bring everything home. Today, I was able to get to the doctor and he, her current doctor, because we changed doctors because the one that she had was not doing what he needed to do. She even said that his bedside manner was terrible. So we finally pushed her to get a new doctor. Come to find out now my challenge after speaking with him, going to the pharmacist to get the medicine, they're telling me, oh, well, your doctor approved it, but the insurance company doesn't approve it and just try to stay calm and just try to meet that need. You know, it can be a challenge to meet that need. It really uh, kind of turned into um, a family affair. Pretty much when I make my call schedule, as much control as I have, I have to always coordinate it with my sister. Uh, and then part, and my sister is also there to uh, go to the doctor with her on the appointments that I can make, uh, I am there. And so sometimes I do get, feel somewhat guilty. But what are some uh, self-care tips? And, and Dr. Fudge, since we have you up, give us a couple tips for self-care. What do you do? I know you work many hours, long hours, but how do you unwind and take care of yourself? Um, well, I admit that I have not always done a very good job of that. Um, and um, however, age, um, does help you realize that sometimes you just, you've got to let go and uh, slow down. So, you know, one of the, the goals that I set for myself was to be in bed by 930. Now, sometimes that doesn't happen. A majority of time it does not happen, but on the days that it does happen, I recognize how much better I feel uh, the next morning. Because I have such a great zest for life. I certainly had to learn and learn how to tap into some self-care techniques. But besides doing the mani petties and, you know, Going to the Y, I just started you know, trying to do the water aerobics. You know, really, water is just fabulous for just bringing some calm. Uh, but I love to drive. And sometimes I just go out of the way and drive a couple more miles. I'll turn on the music and I'll just drive. And it just gives me a sense of calm like no other. And people's like, 
Would you just love to drive? Yes, I do. And sometimes I just get in my car and go. I actually believe that having pet a pet has been like a, you know, a, a few when my right before my mother was ill, I, I got we got a dog, um, and my mother said, "You're going to have a dog in the house." Well, it was a little a little poodle. Well, she came to live with us, and that was her companion. They'll they will lay right there and in her room by the bed or at the feet at the foot. They'll lay right there with her. To, the self care is to remember the things that you enjoy the most. Before we uh, wrap up, I do have a final question uh, for our caregivers today, and that is, if each of you could let us know and honor um, some of those family members, those loved ones that you would like to recognize on this Caregiver Awareness yes, Day. Thank you. I would love to honor my husband William Shepherd for his bravery and courage through it all. I'd just like to say the name of Hattie Smith and Leroy Smith, my parents who gave me the best training for being a caregiver. Hi, I would like to honor my mom, Maddie Worthy. She's been through a lot and I just admire her steadfastness and really wanting to kind of hang in there and just be there for it all. And also her sister, my aunt, who is an AKA sister, uh, Mary Ruth Kapsiak. She has been a gem, not only to help me, but everyone in our family. But certainly we would like to honor my daughter, Terry Murphy, Sarah Terry Murphy. Um, she's deceased now. And also my mom, Sally Johnson. She was a two-time cancer survivor and many, many other caregivers, other persons that I've given care to. I think that they all were super, super people. First, I'd like to speak my mom's name, Evelyn Patricia Fletcher. Um, and what a privilege. Uh, I'm thankful to God that he trusted me enough to uh, be in her corner to support her um, for 15 plus years. Um, but honestly, we were talking about tips earlier. The other names that I have to speak are that of my husband, my amazing husband, uh, Ricky, still as most know him in the community, but my, our daughters, Erica and Rochelle, who also just stepped in when help was needed. They would go with me to appointments. They would go with her to appointments. They, you know, just made sure that throughout the entire journey. Absolutely. Dr. Fudge? Well, you guys are going to make me cry, I think. <laughs> uh, I said, speaking my grandmother, uh, Lillian Rebecca uh, Cotton Jones, she reminded me that I had very little nursing skills. And I said, you're right, because I don't do this, so I'm learning. Um, and I had a cousin, Teresa Robinson, who came to help me learn how to turn in the bed to do all of those things. Um, so uh, I would also like to speak um, uh, my mother's name, Barbara Jean Williams, uh, because I know what she's been through. Um, and I know how fortunate we are that at, with the diagnosis um, of ovarian cancer in 2017, uh, uh, that she is still with us. But I would have to be remiss without saying my mother, Effie Maud Shannon Alexander, my father, Tommy Alexander, the, I don't look at them as needing care like a caregiver because I believe in their coming through their current situations and be restored to the energy that they've always had. As I'm sitting here, I would be remiss if I didn't recognize my own mother, uh, Jeanette Hamilton, um, who I became a caretaker. She's now deceased, uh, but I do want to um, speak her name as we talk about um, Caregiver Awareness Day. And I'd also be remiss if I didn't mention my aunts, um, Benita Britton and Yvonne Jelts, because those two sisters, without them, I don't know how I would have managed with my own mom. So I appreciate them and I love them um, for all that they do. They continue to keep our family uplifted. So I speak their names tonight as well. 
ladies, that's about all the time that we have. And I want to thank everyone for joining us for our pink tabletop conversation. Um, again, this has been wonderful. We have been able to recognize some amazing caregivers, uh, loved ones throughout the program. We've talked about tips, um, how to do self-care. Again, I want to uh, congratulate you who are um, in the field, who may be in the medical field working uh, and taking care of individuals. Those of you who are taking care of your loved ones. Again, thank you so much for joining our Pink Table Conversation. Thank you. <music>